my name is Mylene and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be building a face and body landmark detection application that allows us to track movements in real time. So there's a number of things you can do with an application like this. I've seen some people, for example, build out an application to be able to track sign language and translate that in real time. Um, today, we are going to be building something a little bit simpler, uh, which is a fact generating application, but we're going to create an interactive experience where we can touch the screen or our, you know, a virtual machine screen um, and have those facts appear on the screen for us. To build this out, we are going to be using a Python library called MediaPipe to get started with the base code, which I actually wrote a couple of years ago. And then we'll be using GitHub Copilot agent mode with VS Code to be able to then vibe code our way to the lovely application. Part of that is going to be me just showing you what my best practices are for vibe coding at the moment. So if you're interested in any of this, please keep watching. Okay, so as usual, the first thing that we want to do is we want to start in on GitHub. Um, we are gonna start today in my own GitHub uh, repository. Like I mentioned, I wrote this three years ago based off of some other tutorials that I saw that I thought were really interesting at the time. Something I will note is that there has been loads of updates to MediaPipe. So at the time, it was actually quite restrictive which operating systems you were using with which version of Python, but it seems to me like they've made a lot of updates. So I don't think you have to worry as much and I should actually update the readme. I will do that. Um, but this is where we're gonna start. We're not going to clone the whole repository because the only thing I think we really want to get from here is just this Jupyter notebook. And so to do that, I'm just gonna copy the raw file and then I'm gonna go to my, let's go to our VS code and then we're gonna create, let's call it landmark.txt. And then let's paste everything here. So one of the cool things with Jupyter Notebook is like you can copy the raw file format and then paste it as, as text. And then you can just rename it as IPNB and that will create <laughs> the Jupyter Notebook for you, which is super useful sometimes. Um, so here is the code that we're gonna use to get started. Uh, obviously to get started, we need to install these specific uh, packages. So let's go ahead and just do that. I'm going to do that directly in my terminal. So I'm just going to run that command, I'm going to ignore that. And uh, let's just have all of those packages installed. We should also set the Python environment. I'm just going to be using Python 3.9 for this, which is just my base environment. I know it's probably not best practice to um, to install directly into base, but that's what we are gonna just be doing for today. It's gonna to be easier. So the first thing we are doing is we're importing from MediaPipe and we're importing OpenCV. MediaPipe is what's going to allow us to actually interact with the machine learning model that does the face uh, detection, the landmark det detection. And then OpenCV is what's going to allow us to be able to then live stream and have that facial detection show up on our screen. So to do that, we're just going to run the um, play button and hopefully, yeah, no errors there. And here we are going to be, like it says, we're going to be initiating some helpers. We are starting out by capturing our video input from using OpenCV's video capture method. The zero just represents the first camera that it has access to, um, which is going to be the camera that, you know, getting my feed here. And then after that, we are also going to initiate the holistic model, which is a model from um, MediaPipe that just allows us to detect holistic features. So our face, our body, different poses, you can detect those all with this model, which is great. So this should work right away. Let's go ahead and test it by running. You know, it's always, I'm always nervous. <laughs> okay, actually, uh, I think it is struggling to be able to, I'm recording a video. And so I think it's, 
it's struggling to be able to have the video recorded here. So I'm gonna stop recording from this screen and then you're just going to see the output from the facial landmark uh, on my screen here. So I'm gonna make that switch now. So I am just going to show you. Uh, I wonder if I, why can't I enlarge this screen? Hmm, is that enlarged? I hope it's fine show you this is pretty much what it looks like at the moment just right away taking the code straight from my github and using that locally on my machine really easy to run not a lot of code um, and so this is actually you know, it, it looks like something that's quite complex but actually pretty straightforward to implement with um, a, a powerful model like what we had for MediaPipe. Now I wanna take this one step further and actually create a more interactive experience for us um, using the same code. Let's switch back to our normal setup uh, to see what that looks like. Okay, now we are back in our Deep to Notebook. Our code ran successfully and we saw just what this this code in this deep to notebook can do so what i want to do next is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to open up copilot edit you do have to be signed into github to be able to access this and i'm going to be using code 3.7 sonnet i'm going to change i think you you should be able to see that but i'm going to change this edit to agent and that's just going to be able to help me interact with the code and improve it as I go. We want to take the, you know, the current code that we have, level that code up. I want to also move that code into a Python um, file instead. So I do want to share some best practices of things that I've learned with Vibe coding so far. The first initial thing that I will say is so important and has made all of the difference for me with vibe coding is the model that you're using. If you are using a model that is not built for programming for code specifically, I just don't think that that model is gonna do a great job for you. I think it might get close to what you would like, but in something where we're using an editor and something like agent mode where we want the agent to have more autonomy, using the right model for it really matters. The second thing I will say that's important is also I, I wouldn't give, I wouldn't try and one shot things. I think you can do that with smaller projects where you go ahead and one shot something or something that's like quite a common thing to do that usually is fine. But if you're trying to build out something that's a little bit more complicated, maybe a slightly more niche, like we're trying to do today, my advice would be to start from existing code that has or has a good framework for uh, the model to start from and then build up and iterate on that as you go along. So I want to show you what that looks like for me in my process. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing I would do is it can already detect the Jupyter Notebook there. So I would give it some context. But when I was testing this out, I wanted to just confirm that I didn't need any other models to be able to directly detect the specific fingers. I want to say, um, I want to have a Python script that does this, but also labels my fingers. So let's go ahead and run that and give that to agent mode and see what it's generating. Oh. Okay, so we can see that it's saying right away, I'll have you create a Python script that detects the face and body and landbox using land uh, uh, using um, using media pipe. It's giving us all of these things. It's saying it's already created. We can see already. We can see the Python file is ready for us to use. Okay, so we can go ahead and just keep those changes and let's run this code. It even gives us the command we need to be able to run this. So I'm just going to copy the command and I'll paste it. And then again, because I'm streaming at the same time, I'm just going to switch to the mode where we can see what's happening on the screen. So let me do that now. And then let's enlarge this and see what we're getting. Are we getting? Yes. Okay. That worked as expected. So you can see 
Um, my laptop is a bit small, but we can see there's our thumbs. Those are our index fingers. Things are working as expected. Things are working as expected, which is really nice. So, okay, great. So I think that is, is good. Let's go back and start to make more edits as well. So let's press Q. Now we are back <laughs> to our code editor again. And we can see that that code ran without any issues. And that would be like one of the cool things is that these changes, because they are not huge, it's easy for me to go in and compare those changes to what I had in my Jupyter notebook and see what was the difference here in terms of specifically mapping out the, the different things. Let's, let's see if we can actually take a look at what some of those differences were. So for example, we put the uh, different names there. We have MP solution hands model. So not just the holistic model, we're actually now accessing the hands model and that's what's giving us these details. So you see like how it's, super, it's, it's nice to be able to go in and understand what's happened. The next thing that I want to do is I don't just want the hands to be labeled. I want to be able to have those hands interact with things on the screen. So I'm gonna say, um, I'll say, I, I always like to give some encouragement. So I'm going to say, this looks great. And then um, let me say, I want to update the code. Um, so it includes some purple, it's a light purple cloud that I can interact with and move around on the screen. Hey, can you make those updates? So let's give that again to um, Claude Sonnet in agent mode and let's see what it comes up with for us. So this is perfect. Our code has rendered, it's made some changes. I'm going to keep those changes and it's created, it's giving us a summary of what it's done. Let's try it out. Let's, again, I'm just trying to go ahead and run the code. This is so cute. Wow. <laughs> I love the clouds. I love fluffy clouds. Like I think it's, it's a big vibe just to have clouds around. I wanted to just move into this full screen so that we can see this interaction clearly. So I'm going to wait for it to do that. Let me do that. Okay, great. It's now in the full screen. Now let's try and move some clouds around. Oh, perfect. Amazing. Grab our index finger. Oh, oh. It's the hand eye coordination. That's the main thing that is going to get me here. But I like these clouds. I think they're really cute. I think it looks great. So let's go ahead and move on. The code is looking good. I thought that was really cute. We might later on just improve what it looks like, even take this one step further and see if that is, if we can make it prettier or something like that. But this is looking good. This is looking great so far. The next thing I want to do, because I want to make this an interactive experience where I'm not just dragging the clouds around, but I actually want to use an LLM in this application in general. And so I wanna make this like a game where we can click on a cloud and have a random fact, some information about a random fact pop up. Save a little bit of time. I've already created a prompt for our agent that I tested with GPT-40 and it works quite well. So let's run that again and see which changes agent mode makes for us. Okay, so it has, finished generating the code that we need. It's made some changes. We are going to keep those changes and hopefully everything has worked. So we're going to just go ahead again, like we did last time and just test this out directly by running the script. So let's switch cameras one more time. Let's pull it in from the other desktop to take a look at. I am seeing that it is loading the facts and I'm not sure why it's doing that. Let's go ahead. Let's try and tap one of them and see if that will help. It's still loading a fact. Hmm. Let's pull this. <laughs> okay. 
You see, it doesn't always, okay, there we go. Please wait. Okay, it's just, ah, now it's too far up. I need it to, <laughs> Okay, the fact did load. <laughs> the fact did load, but it's not showing on the screen. It's giving us some stuff about Rosetta Stone, which is nice. Let's pull this fact. Let's move this. Okay, there we go. And I'm saying the first email was sent in 1971, which is really cool. So this is a cool uh, user experience. I do think it works. I'm going to off screen, probably just play around a little bit with code and then show you the end result of what things look like for me. Okay, that is going to be it for today's tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Um, I just wanted to show you the basics of getting started with landmark detection and then also using vibe coding to then take that into a real world app that we can use and create an interactive with, experience with. Um, I will leave links to all of the code that you saw me using in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.